Well, uh... What a year, guys. Yeah, I mean, what else can I say, but, uh... What a year, and, uh... I really need some Thomas the Tank Engine right now. I'm sure a lot of you are aware by now. I've been binge-watching a couple of things like, say, The Loud House and various comedies I love just to pass the time through this pandemic. And another thing that helps me get through it is Thomas the Tank Engine. The classic series, I mean, not the new stuff. And I'm here once again to talk about various things about Thomas the Tank Engine for this year's Thomas Semba. Because hey, we all need something to look forward to, right? Aside from being one of my popular childhood favourites, Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends has helped me get through the coronavirus pandemic. With binge watching various episodes and all that stuff. Now it's time to talk about it again for Thomas Semper for 2020. And this year I'm going to talk about some more forgotten characters, a few more bits of trivia, Series 23 and Steam Team to the rescue. As long with a few other surprises just to mix things up a little bit. There's a lot of surprises in store for you this year folks. So sit back, relax, and enjoy Thomas Semba 2020. Well, like the past few years now, I bring you another chapter for the forgotten characters of Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends. It's another year of Forgotten Characters, and another five Forgotten Characters to talk about, so let's get started. The spiteful Brake Van was a troublesome Brake Van, who was subsequently crushed into pieces by Douglas on the back of James's train. He was originally introduced in the Brake Van story in the Twin Engines in the Railway series, and his story was adapted for the TV series' second season. The Brake Van took an instant dislike to Douglas and purposely delayed his trains, with Douglas subsequently being the one indirectly blamed. Donald, angry how his brother was being treated by the brake van, bumped him violently to teach him a lesson. The brake van would then behave better for several days. However, the brake van's attitude adjustment was short-lived after Donald ran into a signal box at Tidmouth. The brake van continued his old tricks when he was saddled with James. Douglas, as a result, had to help James up Gordon's Hill. James was short of steam and the brake van was soon squished between both the troublesome trucks and Douglas. By Douglas' force, he subsequently crushed the brake van into pieces. The brake van was never rebuilt and after that and was scrapped. Ever since then, the troublesome trucks had never forgotten the brake van incident and they do not dare play tricks on neither Donald nor Douglas. It had been an accident really, but no one told the trucks that and the trucks thought that Douglas smashed him on purpose. Because of this, Donald and Douglas have transferred goods trains on the main line quite easily. Like the troublesome trucks, and as his name implies, the spiteful brake van was spiteful, very rude, disrespectful, and incredibly impolite to engines, especially Donald and Douglas. And even though we never saw him again after brake van, one of his faces did get used for a troublesome truck in the series 2 episode Percy's Predicament. While the spiteful brake van never appeared again after his first and only episode, he still got lots of merchandise based on him, Ertor in the UK only, Wooden Railway, which looked more like his Railway series counterpart rather than the TV series counterpart, and an HO and large scale Batchman model, which is sort of a clever blend between the Railway series counterpart and the TV series counterpart, having his TV series appearance with the Northwestern Railway issues on him like in the Railway series. It's very unlikely that the spiteful Brake Van will ever come back to the TV series, unless they decide to make a flashback of him or something, but his legacy will live on in the hearts of the classic series fans. The second character I'm going to bring up is Stepney, the Blue Bell Engine, named after a district in London. In the Railway series, his origin is pretty much the same as it is in real life, where he was threatened to be scrapped but was then saved by the Blue Bell Railway. Whereas in the TV series, he was actually saved by Rusty and then brought to the Blue Bell Railway. Stepney now runs the Blue Bell branch line. He later travelled a long distance away from his railway to the Fat Controllers Railway as a visitor after getting tired of travelling on his branch line. He had done many things on his visit to the railway, including making friends with Thomas, getting involved with a chase with Caroline and cricket players, and helping Duck to pull an express train after the diesel sucked the inspector's hat through his air intake and broke down. Stepney later wanted to have a change from his branch line and was sent back to the Fat Controllers Railway, again on a visiting basis, to help Toby and Mavis at the quarry. This excursion nearly ended in disaster after Ari and Bert tried to scrap Stepney, luckily without success. After Stepney accidentally ventured into the Varsodor Ironworks, 
For a long time afterwards, Stepney had very little actual contact or involvement with the Fat Controller's Railway. On a few occasions during the Sips series, he could be seen helping out with the other engines while he visited the Northwestern Railway. He could be seen helping the other engines out by delivering trucks filled with flowers while the stations prepare for the most beautiful station competition. A short time later, a hot air balloon was flying across the island and Duck accidentally ran into him due to gazing at it. After he helped Edward with the running of the loop line, Stepney had virtually disappeared, not counting the stock footage that was seen in the 7th series, until a while later when he was hit with a truck full of sugar in an incident caused by Rosie. Stepney is a bubbly, modest and humble chap who is bursting with enthusiasm. He is very eager to please, and is every engine's friend. When given a job to do, he is determined to complete it to the best of his ability. Stepney is not only one of the most popular characters in the Railway series as well as the TV series, but he's also one of the few characters that's based on a real-life steam engine. And that's really amazing, in my opinion. While he's become one of the most popular characters in the franchise, he's never been seen again aside from various cameos in the series. But after series 12, we never saw or heard of him again. And that's a damn shame in my opinion, because he left such an impact and is such a favourite among many fans. So it would be really nice to see him return to the series sometime in the future. The next characters are Splatter and Dodge, referred to as Splodge by Diesel 10, are two diesel shunters who were Diesel 10's bumbling minions. During their visit to the island, Diesel 10 wanted Splatter and Dodge's help to get rid of the steam engines as well as the lost engine. Splatter and Dodge were complacent with his plans, been a lookout for their boss and being present when he was scheming. As time went on, Splatter and Dodge spent their time mocking their boss and pointing out the flaws in his scheme. This caused Diesel 10 to lose his temper and cause problems. They arrived at Tim Hachez and spied on the steam engines until Harold flew by, spreading sneezing powder dumped by Diesel 10 all over Thomas and them. The next day, they arrived at the smelter's yards and listened to Diesel 10's plan to destroy the lost engine and the other engines. Toby, however, overheard their plans and rang his bell to distract Diesel 10, causing his claw to knock the shed over the diesels and trapping them. They later showed how useful they could be to Diesel 10 when they found the magic buffers, but instead of going through them, they decided to tell Diesel 10 in the following morning. Percy saw them and went back to warn Thomas. However, the two eventually grew tired of Diesel 10, and when he tried to chase down Lady and Thomas, they refused to follow him and told him to do it himself. What happened to them after that is unknown, although it can be assumed that they returned to the mainland after being found out by the Fat Controller. Splatter and Dodge are like Donald and Douglas and Bill and Ben in my opinion. The twins where wherever you find one of them, you find the other. They're just never apart. Both engines are simple-minded, awkward, cowardly, and tend to banter. Splatter is the more talkative of the two, while Dodge is the more intelligent. Although Percy fears them, they do not have the intelligence nor villainy to match Diesel 10's. They enjoy watching Diesel 10's plans backfire, but are also prone to making a mess of things. Despite initially siding with Diesel 10, they seem reluctant to destroy a fellow engine, even a steam engine, and eventually abandon Diesel 10 in the end. They also seem to have poor vocabulary, such as when they try to use the words emphatically as they left Diesel 10 to do the chasing on his own, even though they had no idea what that word meant. Much research into these characters led me to realise that Splatter and Dodge were actually repainted for Marion Burt's Series 5 models, and it's been rumoured that they were left back in Canada after filming the movie, but this is however untrue as the models were reverted back to Marion Burt for the Sith series. Even though we never actually saw it on screen, Splatter and Dodge had various endings in the director's cut of the film, and if Brutalkov's original vision of Thomas and the Magic Railroad got released in theatres like she wanted it to, then they might have gotten a better explanation to why Splatter and Dodge didn't help Diesel 10 at the end of the film, rather than just saying, oh, we don't like you anymore, just because. And it might have also explained why they never returned again. And it's even been stated that Splatter and Dodge were originally intended to return for Day of the Diesels. However, they were later dropped and replaced with Paxton and Sydney, who were also based on the same engines as them. And I find that a real damn shame, because these two are such fun characters, and it would be really nice to see them again. And the final character I'm going to talk about is Elizabeth, the vintage Sentinel Steam Lorry, formerly owned by the Fat Controller. Prior to becoming the controller of the Northwestern Railway, Sir Topham had owned Elizabeth. She noted that he was not the best driver. For unknown reasons, Elizabeth was shut up in a shed and remained there until Thomas's crew found her several years later when they needed urgent transportation to the works for new side rods. Jem Cole restored Elizabeth, and she is to this day in perfect working order. 
When the Scarlet Army Railways was facing hardships, Elizabeth agreed to help the narrow gauge engines clear the line of fallen branches and restore the line. One winter, when Thomas refused to wear his snowplow, Elizabeth scolded him, stating that he could not be reliable without it. She was given the task of taking puddings to Brendam Docks to deliver to the mainland, but during the trip she slid on the icy ropes and got herself stuck in a snowdrift. Thomas and Terence rescued her and they managed to deliver the puddings in time before the ship left. And since then she's made various appearances in the series until series 11. After that she was never seen or heard of again. Elizabeth does not like laziness, carelessness or rudeness and will respond to these characteristics in the strongest terms. Because of this she can often come across as harsh and severe. Although she believes roads are superior to rails, she often helps the engines out. She is very sensitive about how others refer to her by her age. She has a special fondness for her former owner, the Fat Controller, and it seems that he never seems to take offence or get angered by her strong statements when she criticises the way he drives. Elizabeth is the only character to be able to insult the Fat Controller without getting into trouble. That's quite funny in my opinion. You might remember when I talked about Series 6 in the first year of Thomas Sember, I brought up how Elizabeth is one of my least favourite characters because she's a total bitch. Well, I'm actually starting to warm up to her a bit more as years gone by. And even though she never appeared in the series again after Series 11, her TV series model is on display at Drayton Manor and is currently wearing her grumpy face since early 2020. However, her smiling face was on her television series model when she was first put on display at Drayton Manor in 2009. Even though she was never one of my favourite characters, I still think it would be nice to see her pop up again in the series sometime soon. And those are the five forgotten characters that we can talk about this year for Thomas Semper. There's plenty more forgotten characters in the future, but like every one of them, they'll all have to wait until next year.